Sit, turn, type, sit. Good boy. Roof. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Lift off. enjoy some of the the fabulousness as, as as a matter of fact shout out to the seneca that sunday was just me and brother aj watching mania and we were the only ones like from the core us yeah that was there but everybody else started pulling up that were casual fans yeah and was getting into the shit you know there was a little kid in the booth behind us i was wondering eye. how it was looking in there yo it what yo am i am i in the shot Oh yeah, you in the shot. Right. You in the shot. Let's go. Yeah, you you in there, boy. <laughs> but so the Seneca was lit on a Sunday. Yeah, after just the... us. It was just us chilling, getting hype. But um, as you guys know, the third announcer table on the uh, or in the building, our boy Mark Bays and uh, and of course wrestling Reem, straight out of Philly, Mister Lo- Mister <laughs> Loose's voice, got it back just in time because it seems as though that they they might be well, you know, Mike. There is some debt to pay for this. Um. But before we get into that, Mark, just, 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 let's, let's take it away. Let's take it away. I go by the name Mark Bays. That's M-A-R-C-B-A-Z-E, a.k.a. Marco 713, a.k.a. Marco 316, a.k.a. Marco 718, a.k.a. Marco 2024, a.k.a. Marco Mamba. Oh, okay. Okay. I see what we're doing Listen, here. You, ain't, you, you forgot one. Marco Deadman, <laughs> uh, Marco um, Phenom. Uh huh. <clears throat> For those of you listening, Marco Booger Red. <laughs> <laughs> I go by the name of Wrestling Ream. You know, you got to drop the W because apparently, devastated y'all. I ain't even got no intro. Oh. You know, I, I'm here. You know, I wasn't going to run from the, from, the depths that I gotta pay, mm-hmm. you know what I mean. But I am, I am extremely heated. That this, this, this recording, I have very strong opinions, and I have a declaration. <laughs> I am the heel with the opinion made of steel, but today is 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 standing on business. I'm making sure today he's the face who who's lost fate. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. I ain't lose faith. I ain't lose faith. I ain't lose faith. <laughs> yo, just no. Yo, let's get to it. Let's get into it. I'm ready. Let's and get course, into it. And of course, I'm Mr. Ear to the Mat, the King of Talk Style. Uh, as always, the Cheap Thrill and the Red Reddington of Wrestling, Jay the Red Santa. You guys already know that shit. So um, what is it that um what was supposed to happen? At Mania, oh, we, we gonna get it. We gonna drag. You know how Reem like to slow burn yeah. it. Oh, okay. You know, uh, we 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 gonna we gonna drag I'm wrestling Reem today. Okay. Yo. Okay. Oh, okay. Let's I got look. I even got. I even got a concoction poured. Oh, up got the concoction in Ooh. a discreet in a discreet bottle. Nice, nice. I am wrestling <laughs> Reem today. Okay. All right. So. In the spirit, in the flesh. So I think red. You know how they did that John Cena uh print call? Yes. Where where the John Cena music was just it kept running. Wow. Yeah. Let's just have Cody Rhodes music queued up on both turntables. Oh, I, oh I, I, we Th- there's no, take the extra vinyl uh uh-huh. back to the van. Take uh, the extra vinyl back to the van. Okay. Both turntables. We could change the BPM if we want a variation. Okay. We okay. could change the BPM. Okay. We can I, do that. Okay. We could go to 180. We could go to 99. Okay. We can do that. But I just need this queued up. I need it. You, the same way you want a Stone Cold's glass, we just going to queue this. Yo. Randomly. I swear. Okay. This is like, yo, the way Mania ended, I swear, bro. Like, you could not have, if you wanted to, like, bro, I wish I would have saw my face. 
the minute I saw all the shenanigans. Like, I knew John Cena was coming out. But hearing Undertaker come out and then hearing the three on the one, two, I was like, <laughs> yo, the three I swear. On the one, two. Shouts out to Brie because she was there. Thank God she didn't record me. I was standing up, jacket off. It's like 14 degrees in the stadium. I'm like, yo, Kick out. Kick out. Yo, he didn't kick out. I immediately just sat down. Yeah, he almost, he almost sound like he almost sound like he just like like on that moment when you knew that your your, your, your your best friend. It was Lil Reen. Yeah, like, <laughs> kick Bro, out, kick out. I was I sat down and we waited like there for you know, about your, like your pet is just dying and it's like oh my god. Just, Come on, breathe one more time, man. Just now, breathe you one know, more you time. know, what, you know when people try to console you and they rub your back. Yeah. I never understand what that does. But I just felt my <laughs> back being rubbed. I'm just there, like, <laughs> yo. Let's get into the entrance music let's mood do let's do of it. the week. And like I said, it's on t- it's on two turntables. Um, we are calling this. Well, I, I believe Reem will call this the Republican national anthem. But today, he'll be singing it. Entrance music mood of the week. Adrenaline in my soul. No. Something, something, Cody Rhodes. <laughs> uh, so do you think we should lead in with the, uh, the, the, the song itself? And then I'll play the uh, instrumental so then he could go into it on his own? Or, I, or, is, or is that just the mood of the week? Night one, WrestleMania started hot. It did, right? Um, Night one, yeah, definitely. Let's just start hot. Let's yeah. let's get the instrumental. Y'all are disgusting. <laughs> let's get the instrumental. Y'all are disgusting. Let's get the, let's instrumental. Get the instrumental. All right, you know what? Let's just go with it. You ready? Um, you, uh, you need the you, you want to you want to lead them. You, you want to lead them in with, with the you know wrestling has one more than. Oh one yeah, I'll do, I'll, right, I'll, right. I'll do that. I'll do that. I'll do that for you. Okay. You got the lyrics pulled up. I have the lyrics pulled up. Okay. Okay. Yes. I All right. right. You ready? Okay. Cue. Uh, um. Hold on, um, Bruce. I'm not singing Bruce. the whole song. <laughs> I'm not singing the whole song. Bru- we could we could all just do a wall two. <laughs> The way that they do no, no, before they go to when we get, get, get at least get to the part we give it all away to get it all that part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That yeah. ready for sure. Okay. Uh, Bruce Levesque, mm-hmm. <laughs> my music. Hold on, <laughs> Rest, wait. Wrestling has more than one royal family. Yes, it's the truth. <clears throat> I'll be your pyro. I'm actually turning up his mic <laughs> and lowering the music so we can hear him clearly. Adrenaline <laughs> in the soul. Every fight out of control. Do it all and get them all the feet. <laughs> Crowd is here, here. About to blow. <laughs> Waiting for me to start the show. show. Out the curtain, the lights go up. I'm home. Whoa! My father said, <laughs> What he say? When I was younger, I was young, little ring. Better man. <laughs> you took it all away. I gave it all away. Why? Can't take my freedom. Little ring. Changed the game, but better made the pay. Ring. I built my kingdom. Now you take my dreams away. Oh, I don't know the word. That's all y'all get, man. Yo, that was you got mouthwash, man. That's, I need mouthwash. That's that was so disgusting. It's not so beautiful, don't you agree? It's not so beautiful, don't you agree? Yo. Oh, man. <laughs> Man, my word, yo, this is not going to be the last bet. I guarantee you. Oh, man. Respect. man. Respect. Good job, bro. Good job. Yo, listen. I ain't even, my, you know what my interest music theme of the week is? Cue it, cue it, cue it. Uh, two uh, turntables, okay. two turntables, two turntables. Wrestling has more than one. <laughs> 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 Y'all got it. Y'all got it. Can I get the lyrics? I'm not sick. Yo, listen. Come on, we wrote you in. Man, Come on, man. together. Ready, ready, ready. Adrenaline, Adrenaline in my soul. soul. 
every fight out of control. Do it all to get them off their feet. Oh, <laughs> Yo, what? <laughs> I didn't go lie. I'm 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 fine with that being my interest music of the week because I really like singing the lyrics just now. It actually hit. Took it all away. <laughs> you literally took it all the way. Like I yo, y'all don't understand the devastation that I had inside Lincoln Financial. We'll get, we'll get to that. We'll get like, to that. I, I, I'll do. I'll do mine. I'll do my interest. And and it also goes off the piggyback for WrestleMania Night One, um, and probably the best match of the night for me has to go with. Okay. Yes. I was hoping you played it for a third time. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. um, yeah. I, I, they, so for the, for the curtain jerker to open the show and to know that Becky was 102 fever dealing with strep and all that and the, the way that they tore it up, I have to say like big, big, big commitment to her. And Rhea right now, Smoking hot. It's ridiculous on, on, on that level. It's crazy. But definitely, definitely shout out to them and shout out to, to Rhea for that. But also that being said. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's going to upset me? This is probably going to be the most played episode we've done to this point. Strictly because people are watching this for this reason. Y'all are nasty. <laughs> Adrenaline about <laughs> something, something called heroes. Yo, I want to say shouts out to White Mike, Whole Milk Mike. Oh, man. He pop, yo, I swear to you, if there was anybody who was happy that Cody Rhodes run, it was strictly because he knew that Roman Reigns lost. How I felt about him, yo. <laughs> There's a, there's a video that I put uh, I put in there is the the dude that's standing there after Cody won and he just got the look in the face like yeah that, I, I thought that was Reem I was like I, well, I, you, I, was like, I was standing up I kept screaming kick out because he hit the three he hit the three um that bum ass finisher move crossroads cross roads? Oh, wow <laughs> only 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 finisher move that's worse than that right now is the rainmaker but we'll get into that kick out kick out <laughs> three where I immediately sat down. It's like I lost the feelings in my legs. I just sat down. Did, did you do like the whole slow burn that your finger was up and then you had to like bring it down slowly? Nah, 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 nah. My finger was, <laughs> I, I will say though, I will say though, I was fortunate enough to be surrounded by a lot of Bloodline supporters. Oh, okay. But you, there so were the, you guys had a support group there? <laughs> <laughs> there were, yo, I, you know how much people wore Cody Rhodes' whole attire? Like the. Yeah, they, it was the most sold merchandise in Mania, bro. <laughs> like, <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> Nauseating. It was the most sold merchandise. I couldn't bro. believe it. Because the simple fact that I kept saying to myself, like, yo, it it don't make sense. But I think we could segue this into our first topic. Yeah. The Raw and SmackDown after Mania. Right. Hold on. Let's cover wait, Mania. Wait, 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 wait. Before let's, we do that. Let's cover Mania. Right, let's I cover just wanna, Mania. I want, uh, Mark, I want, and then, you know, I want you to your thoughts about this. Because then you were there for night two. Mm -hmm. But from night one, when the Bloodline match was occurring. Mm -hmm. It didn't seem as though maybe it was they were freezing their ass off because it was cool as shit yeah. out there. Yeah, yeah. But it didn't seem like Cody was getting a big reception during that during that match. It seemed he as though they were, yeah, it seemed like there might have <laughs> been more booze there. Then we fast forward to night two when this night happens, mm -hmm. when this match happens. He was getting booed on night two. What do you think was happening there? What was the transitioning happening? Um, he was in the ring with The Rock, mm -hmm. and The Rock has killed this character. He's made, he's helped make WrestleMania feel as big as it felt this year. So I think yes. the fans, I think as a community, wrestling fans were super appreciated, uh, super appreciative of what we got this year. And The Rock catch a, catches a lot of flight for leaving and coming and leaving and coming. But he dedicated a lot of time to this. And when a story was first developing, he caught a lot of hell and he was being booed. And it seemed like he was disgusted. You boo the rock. Right, right. You boo the rock. So I think he just tapped into a whole nother character where the the applause, <clears throat> the applause were um 
they were equally divided, even for Seth. I think it was broken up for everybody to get their the respect. The applause were a sign of respect. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know, and even the boos were a sign of respect. I feel like the same people who were cheering were also booing. It was like they were doing what what they what they're supposed to do. Yeah. But at the same time, it was an appreciation for pro wrestling. So, Reen, when you go there on night two, when you're there live, mm -hmm. uh, what was the reception that you heard for Cody as on that night? Well, even though you were in your your, your support group, I'm be honest. I'll be honest. Was, legitimately, there were a lot. Uh, there were a lot more booze than I anticipated. Okay. And I kind of talked that up to Philly being Philly. But when the match started, it just felt like it was like 80% Cody Rhodes fans throughout the entire arena. Right. Which is which is anticipated. You know, right. you expect the face to have the majority support. And in Philly? Mm, and bro. Philly, uh, yeah. But, but <laughs> the minute The Rock came out, you felt like the air being sucked out because you saw like... There was no they people chanted for Cena, right. but once Cena got taken out the equation, they were chanting for Austin, and they didn't get Austin. Okay, so let's do. They let's, got someone else. But. Let's, do, let's do a brief. <laughs> let's do a brief synopsis. Let's do a rundown for night one. So, like we just mentioned, like I mentioned earlier, to kick off, Rhea Ripley versus uh, Becky Lynch. Your thoughts, Mark? Um, I think it was a great kickoff match. Like it started off hot. Um, I was I was upset because the Seneca didn't have the freaking audio for the first 20 minutes. So I miss Coco Jones singing the national anthem. She looked beautiful, by the way. And I watched it back on playback. She sound beautiful. Um, it looked cold as shit out there. Like it was <laughs> it was gray as a <laughs> motherfucker <laughs> on that TV. Like it was I felt that. Shit, it was cold in the Seneca. Hell yeah, like, it was cold in there. Nah, you you didn't want motherfuckers to open the door. Like, Yo, it was, at it was, all. Shout out to that back door in the Seneca, man. But um, <laughs> Rhea, Rhea Becky match, I think it was a great way to start off WrestleMania. Uh, the two ladies did a, an amazing job. Shout out to Becky for, thugging you know, th thugging it out, the fever, all of that. Them going out there, kicking off the show in, in the freaking cold, and them putting on an amazing... Opening match. Reem, that spot with the electric chair and that they went out of the ring and she fucking landed that shit and still had her up. Yeah. Fucking wow. That's insane. Yeah. That's insane. I, that was a match that I was like, I wasn't mad at either either decision, whether Becky won or, mm -hmm. or um, Rhea won. I was actually a little bit more surprised that Rhea won because I figured that, you know, if you were ever going to end a lengthy reign, WrestleMania would have been the night. Shouts out to Rhea. She is proven to be a trusted and legitimate champion. Now the question is, who's going to be that next one up to beat her? Yeah. I don't know. If, if Becky didn't do it, then what are you saying? Charlotte? But the match that they put on was a, was a, was a great match. Um, I think this actually helps the profile of Becky because it's like her flu game for her. Right. I, but, heard, I um, heard people make that comparison as well, yeah. But, but overall, I... I, I I, I was kind of jaded because I wanted that night. I, I wanted that match, either that one or the the Jade, Bianca, Naomi match to be on night two so I could see that in person. But that was a good match. Next up, we have the... um. Before that, oh, uh, sorry. Rhea's entrance was phenomenal. I'm not even into the heavy metal. I I didn't really <laughs> like her song like that. Mm. Um, really? I, I've, come around, I've come around to it. And then I think Mania always takes the entrance and, and the music to another level. Like, I, I, I start to appreciate it more. I didn't appreciate Bianca Belair's music until she performed with the band. And I didn't wow. appreciate uh, Rhea's music until maybe, like, you know, last year she walks out, she starts singing her music. But, um... It, it was it was cool to see. Shit, I the, thought it was her singing when the, when the fucking song that's came what out. I'm saying. I thought it was <laughs> what, her. What, is, that how, her. is that how that band typically yeah, dressed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's or, how they look. Because... Yeah. Dude looked like Rhea Ripley. <laughs> 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 it was like, what the hell? Confused me. But um, yeah, I love to see the women get in the same spotlight that the men are getting. I'm not looking at these like women's matches. I'm looking at them as just matches. phenomenal matches. They're yeah. doing things. Do that you the think? Guys are do you doing. think that um, if you had the book next year early, mm -hmm. do you think that there are competitors out there who can main event or have that last slot, if you will, on the card right now? Um. Because uh, there was there was a little talk about Bailey, she should main event night one, being that she's the Rumble winner. How do you feel about that? I I don't know yet. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. If anything, it it'll probably be Bianca, Rhea, something like that, like something to that magnitude. But I I have to think on that and come back to it. So just to just a heads up, um, opening up a show 
being the curtain jerker is not a bad thing. It's actually one of the prestigious um, positions besides main eventing yeah. on the card because you set the tempo, you set the pace of the show. So now you 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 light up the, the 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 night as the first match. Now you walk through that curtain and you tell everybody else beat that. that. Yeah, yeah, beat that. That that, that cash it. Yeah. So yeah, we'll get, <laughs> get to that. So night. Uh, so then we get uh we get the six man tag, uh the six man uh, tag team match for uh, the WWE uh, unify uh, unified tag titles, which we found that they were able to split them. Mm-hmm. Uh, you guys know who already won them. Uh, by the way, I, that was my prediction. I already, I, I, it was crazy that I actually fucking came true. Awesome truth and fucking a town down under get the win there. But uh, for the match itself, for me, the one who shined in that match was actually fucking R Truth's old ass. Like he was taking fucking bumps. I didn't think he could still take. Yeah, yeah, I was shocked by that. Yeah, I agree. Um, shout out to that ladder for holding together because that ladder was bending like they, the they motherfucker. Actually, yeah, they actually said that. When, when when they like we saw Damien switch it out, yeah, he said like, "Yo, that shit was no good." That so shit then, was bending like the niggas at Six Flags, you know. The, <laughs> that shit was standing on his last leg. I'm like, "Yo, somebody gonna die up there!" And you know, there were multiple wrestlers getting on that ladder who didn't see that the ladder was breaking mm. after one of them may have taken a spot, mm. and they would keep climbing on it. I'm like, "Oh my gosh!" Like I'm just. I'm praying. I'm I'm praying. Somebody that somebody actually said it was it was like was was that ladder made of foam? Like the way that it was the like, way that it was bending. I was <laughs> like, damn, what the hell? But um, I do agree with you. I think our truth did shine in that mm-hmm. match. Um, one thing this WrestleMania taught me was patience for several reasons. And um I love Austin Theory. Mm-hmm. I, I'm also starting to like um Grayson Waller a lot. I think that the ceiling for them is very high. Um we were confused as to what they were doing, whether they just jump putting them together because they, you know, need a little bit of TV time. And it's like, what are they doing with them? So to see them come out of WrestleMania and win the uh, tag team champions, is Austin Theory undefeated at WrestleMania now? He, uh, he I definitely believe has so. Two, yeah. two, I think he won last year. I, yeah, I think he's 3 0. I think he is. Yeah. Yeah. So um, shout out to Austin Theory walking out of WrestleMania with a, with a championship. Awesome truth. I don't know how long the title reign is going to last. This was clearly for that moment. Um, I don't know how much they can do with Truth and Miz before it gets too corny and they right. start using and the, the and New Day like, yeah. formula and shit like right. that. So, um, Shouts out to my boy Austin Theory. I am an Austin Theory supporter. Um, I didn't see him winning the tag titles. I probably would have gave the tag title to someone else outside of them. I would have loved to see Judgment Day hold on to it just for aesthetic reasons. You know, you got uh, two world heavyweight champions now in the faction. Y'all know me. I'm not an R-Truth hater. I'm an R-Truth questioner. I question (laughs) every time he's on my screen. I question his antics. I question a lot of things. But I do feel like as such a dedicated worker who's put the time in, for him to never have a WrestleMania match, let alone a moment, I think for him, that was something special for him that, you know, looking in the looking in hindsight, you know, he he was the most over guy. People were chanting his name. Like, I think for him, it meant something to him. So give him that. But like you said, I don't see him at SummerSlam holding on to the titles. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> next up. Uh, next up on the card, uh, I, I this was probably the match that I was like, um, maybe just maybe this would have been a bathroom break match. Mm. Uh, we had LWO versus uh, Legado de Fantasma. Mm-hmm. Uh, eh, I think I actually went to the bar and got, got something to drink during this match, but Thanks. I ended up watching it later on and I was like, oh shit, it was actually it wasn't that bad. Yeah. Yo, your thoughts. Um, I mean, it was a great match. We they are phenomenal wrestlers, mm-hmm. right? They do a lot of high spots. So you know, you know what you're gonna get with that match. I saw a meme. I saw a meme that said uh Rey Mysterio putting over two younger talent, and it was the um visual of Paul Heyman's speech and him saying, You could suck my dick. <laughs> <laughs> Which by the way, fucking phenomenal fucking v- phenomenal speech. speech. Greatest speech ever. Yeah, yeah for a fact. 
that nigga is so New York. He told motherfuckers suck his dick on national TV on the biggest sporting event in history. And um, and bigged up his boy Brock Lesnar. Shouts out to that. Yeah, a, a real one. And I'm not, you know, mm. I'm gonna stay away from that. Mm. But <laughs> loyalty. I, I love seeing loyalty. Bro. Exactly. But um, yeah, I don't really have much to say about this match besides Rey Mysterio really won't let his son win. <laughs> I, 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 I guess that's I guess that's a great example of parenting. I think that I, I, <laughs> Honestly speaking, I thought that match ended on some bullshit. Like, you had, like, I, the correlation with having Jason Kelsey there randomly running into the match that wasn't uh, no disqualification match. They should have been DQ'd, by the way. The referee didn't see it. You ain't, that's why I call it bullshit, bro. Like, to me, I felt like, you know, what this tells me is that Rey Mysterio still has legs in his system that they trying to solidify yeah. him as a competitor, so to speak. But I would have loved to see Dom catch the pin on his father on WrestleMania night. That way they could, oh, I pinned you, da 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 whatever, whatever. But Jason Kelsey and Lane Johnson, I think that's the other dude's mm-hmm. name. Bro, it made zero sense. You could have saved that for... The uh the Bobby Lashley match. Yeah. Cause okay. that there's no yeah. rules in there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I understand the, I don't I don't want to jump the gun, but that would have made more sense booking wise yeah. versus having them randomly run into a luchador match. Like, right. Come on, bro. That that's how I feel about it. I mean, uh Jason Kelsey been wearing the luchador mask and I, all this other stuff. I saw so I guess that. they I saw that. It's the marketing team and whoever the production team did a great job. And when you're working with big corporations, when you're utilizing their space, their facility, they have to get something out of it as well. So this creative going on outside of WWE, this creative on the other side of that business, that's like, how do we intertwine this into what's happening here? How do we make our stuff shine while this is happening here? So just randomly finding a spot for them to place them. Okay, he got the luchador mask. Let's put him with the luchadors and I guess pay respects to this. It's a way for them. It's a way for business to work out in they a beautiful manner where they it didn't mean it much, and they were just trying to get more people on TV. This is the biggest WrestleMania, quote unquote, ever, and the roster is is completely full. And were you satisfied with that H, finish? I didn't really care about it because this match meant nothing. So it, it was That's not opportun- true. It was an opportunity. It was, it, it was. It was like it's pro. Think about it like this. It's like Jordan holding a, a, a open session, and you got LeBron. You got KD, you got Steph, you got all the next generation guys coming up. Bro, all those people in the match outside of Rey Mysterio were dubbed at some point the future of luchador wrestling. They still are. But this match meant nothing. You want to know why? Because the actual story for this match, the actual story for this match, first of all, we thought we were getting LWO versus Legato Del Fantasma, right? We thought we were getting that. And then a week before... Insert Dominic Mysterio, insert Rey Mysterio. Now we and have, insert Andrade, and insert Andrade yeah. a week before. So there was no major build for this story to really get me invested. And we've been put the uh, LWO in the bathroom break faction. So this is what this match was for. They heard us and they knew, you know, people are running late. We always running late. This is society <laughs> in 2024. We're running late. So people probably just piling into the stands. They get their seats. They understand where they're sitting. Time to run out and go get drunk for the night and come back into this shit. And that's why this match was placed where it was. I think no significance. I, I think you had an opportunity to showcase legacy and future at the same time. And it was jaded because you wanted to pander to investors. Us talking about this match in depth is giving it more significance than it got yeah, on, the might, day, yeah. <laughs> on the because, day of because, because what you really want to talk about is going to be the next match, which is Jimmy and Jay's match. Oh and, my god. Yeah. And I and I and I, I got a sense of it. I thought I was the only one in the room that was feeling this, but then um after after what I was feeling from everybody else in that room and then from the rest of the IWC I was not happy. This with was this, match. this was really the bathroom break. Yeah. This was the confirmation. This was like, okay, I know y'all all didn't make it to the bathroom, so we got more <laughs> people in the bathroom. Listen, I've been at. Shout out to my lady for getting me them Raw Before Mania tickets. A sold out Brooklyn. 
I was on the floor, literally got like right there, able to smack hands with, with Sami Zayn, like literally right wow, there when he nice. runs over to the side. Nice. Yeah, we were literally right there. So great night in Brooklyn. But I'm saying this to say I've been in arenas for the last three months consistently, nonstop. So I understand arena etiquette. This is what that was. This was like a DJ set going on longer than usual because the artist isn't here yet. And the Jimmy and Jay Uso match was the confirmation. Go to the bathroom, niggas. This shit is about to go. This shit about to go up. I disagree with you. I felt like in hindsight, they did the Usos dirty. They didn't give them enough story time to build the story. I've been saying this for weeks. I'm like, yo, what is Jimmy doing to make this feel like a legitimate match? They're making Jay look like the next guy up in, in as far as like main event is. But they're not really giving Jimmy the same look to say, like, well, he can possibly pull off the upset. Yeah, you find out what happened later on. There's the reason why. We're <laughs> <laughs> gonna get into that. But even well, still, hold on, hold on, wait, I gotta say this. I gotta say this. Watching that match, bro, I felt like I was cheated because they didn't pull off no real technical stuff. Mm -hmm. It was just a super kick galore. Very AEW. Uh, <laughs> it was very AEW. I don't know. I don't know if y'all yeah, um y'all fuck with Meltzer, Dave Meltzer, and the rating systems. I'm pretty sure Red know what I'm talking about with the rating system. Oh, I know Meltzer very well. He gave it uh three quarters of a star. Out of what? Five. So saying that was three quarters. He three quarters of a star three, so out of five. Point. Which 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 is bullshit because he's such an AEW mark. It, that should have been right up his fucking alley. That match. That's <laughs> shit that pisses me off. I'll tell you this though. The video package for that match was better Elite. than the yes. match. Yeah, <laughs> it was yes. the video package. So hearing you say it was a bathroom break, it kind of like I like nah. I, I think we were shortchanged with that match. I, I don't think so. I think this proved why they were a tag team for so long. Stop it. No, no disrespect. Like Stop it. I, I would love to see them go off and do singles careers, but the way that they wrestled that match, it was like. They gave us the expectation for their wrestling abilities. It was, a, a, it was team, a speed match on X. No. <laughs> As a tag team, it works, right? As a tag team, it works. But them individually fighting each other, I don't think it was the right wrestling styles matched up with each other. It, it felt like them niggas didn't wrestle growing up together. So like I, I, I'll give this to you, all right? The, the match before that was, uh, which was the, the, the six-man tag, the match length for that was 11 minutes, 5 seconds. For the Jimmy and Jay match, Mark, did it go wait, over? Wait, wait, wait. The six-man tag, which is... That was the L LWO versus okay, the okay. God of Death Fireman. Did, did the Jimmy and Jay match go over or under that same time? I think it went over. You think it went I think over? it went under. You went under? It was actually the same fucking time. Wow. Exactly. You would think a match like that would get a little bit more twenty minutes, something, twenty minutes, same time. But you have you have so much history and so much. Even if you even if you don't want to tap into their outside of the ring history, bro. For the last however many years, there was no table spot. You know, it, it felt like they were mimicking other move sets instead of their like. It, there was no uniqueness to the match. What is their move set? This is their move set. I don't even see them niggas lock up. <laughs> that's that, like that's why I, I don't even see them niggas lock up. I don't see. Wrestle. I don't see a nigga drop down to a knee, go behind him, get him in a German suplex position, headlock. I don't see none of the 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 fancy technical shit that you're looking for, and that's not in their repertoire. They are a tag team. They are twins. They are tag teams now. Then now forever <laughs> together. <laughs> They're a tag team. Bro, That's, I, it. That's it. Pure <laughs> bullshit. Pure bullshit. Uh, <laughs> next up, we get uh, Jade Cargill, Bianca Belair, and Naomi versus Damage Control. We have our debut of <laughs> Jade Cargill uh, <laughs> in WrestleMania. <laughs> That's in the books, guys. That's in the, the third announcer's books. <laughs> the Let me tell you one thing. thing. Those are some beautiful black women up there. Yes. No, no argument here. <laughs> beautiful. Jade, Jade got to WWE and she looked like auntie. <laughs> she, I, my respect is like up here for Jade. Jade is like, yo, 
you know, I'll talk to you on the street in AEW. Yeah. Jade in WWE is like, ma'am, can I get the door for you? <laughs> 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 you feel me? That's that's Jade up there. Like WWE has Jade Cargill looking phenomenal. 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 Yep. phenomenal. It's a out of my mouth. Difference with <laughs> her and WWE. Um, the match itself, I threw the Kabuki Warriors and Damage Control, except for Dakota Kai, in the bathroom break, in the yeah. stalls. I threw them in there. I don't like the way they punch. I don't like the way they hit. I I, I don't like the way. That they run down to the fucking rent. Oh, I got it out for uh EO Sky too. All that random ass yelling she was doing. <laughs> but n- nothing, nothing much to say about this. I do feel like um the black woman them. <laughs> I feel like they were getting a lot of attention. Yeah. I feel like they were getting a lot of attention from the media, right? And and rightfully so. Mm. I did feel a little bad for damage control because it was like, oh, and three black women and da, da, da. they are in the ring with three Asian, three, two Asian, and two Asian and well, one Pacific it's, Islander. It's, yeah, New Zealand. It's, but it's, 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 it's not even about that, yeah. it's, it's not even about the, yeah. the nationality. Yet. They are in the ring with with three other women who are responsible for pretty much holding down the women's division over the last year as well. Before Jade entered the picture, no matter what yeah, you like, right. what, what you feel about them. They're on this WrestleMania card for a reason. They played into a significant story. They're champions for a reason. They're, no, they're not. Because nobody's a tag team women's champ for a reason. Until my prediction of where we going with this and how we're going to revitalize the women's <sighs> division. But I hold that, right? <clears throat> um, they were involved in a significant storyline that got us invested into this Bailey character. Mm. So... Um, I do want to shed light on damage control. And they were on the WrestleMania card. There's not much to say Twice. about this match. Yeah. Twice. There's not much to say about this match. I love to see the ladies come out there. I love to see them, you know, on the WrestleMania card. And Jay Cargill, Bianca Belair. Naomi. And your girl, Naomi. Yes. So um, they I, look phenomenal. I'll say this, right? WWE has so many lightning bolts in a bottle. And one of them is Jay Cargill. Now, what they're going to do is position Jade to look like this unstoppable force. Like, for me, the, sh- the, the match that she put on in WrestleMania protected her in a sense of she's not like, technic- she, may- she may not be as technically sound as a Bailey or a, 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 a um, Charlotte Flair. But when people watch her and people tune into her and people see her come into the ring, they pay attention. Mm. Shouts out to Triple H. He's done a tremendous job of putting her in a position to look like like her physique matches how she's being presented, if that makes sense. Yeah, for sure. For me, I saw the match and I said to myself, well, it could have went on a little longer because the Kabuki Warriors are technically sound enough to put over whoever they're going up against. Dakota Kai as well. I felt like, to me... um, didn't they say Oscar Oscar fractured her leg or some shit like that? I thought she it, she she was. Uh, she has a, I think she does. She's her working ankle. on an ankle injury. Yes, yeah. it was an ankle. Yeah. But for me, you know, I felt like if, if there was any of a time to showcase women's wrestling, it would have been that match. And to me, I think it was just more of an appeal versus an actual match that took place. Well, at the same time, you got to take in consideration that she's still. And I'm speaking of Jade. She's still getting used to the WWE formula of how they wrestle that is true so this is why this is why they're pairing her up now because they got to get her into that flow of that kind of pacing because you got to think about it you just left the little leagues and now you're playing in the majors but that's but that's why i said like you could have showcased a little bit more of bianca doing her thing you could have showcased naomi doing her thing and then kind of have be uh not saying that she is this but you could have had jade play the role of um enforcer no uh his name, his name Big is Boss Man. Me. No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, uh, roar. Braun Strowman. Goldberg? There we go. Oh, Braun Strowman. Goldberg. <laughs> no, no, no. Could have played the role of Braun Strowman where he looks good <laughs> in spots. <laughs> I, I was gonna say train, but um, that 
I, I think to me that's gonna be her role for at least another month or so. Another uh, year. Yeah, no, yeah, no, it's gonna be longer than that. Nah. Yeah, it's gonna be longer ching, than that. Ching. We got into this. Here's what I'm saying. And, I'm not, and, and I also have to say, shout out to Naomi when she left and and was in TNA, she sharpened up her fucking skill set because is, she came back. She's a lot cleaner. She's a lot more. She runs the ropes better now. It's she looks a lot better. I have to give a kudos. Which for is that why too. I say yeah. that. All right, if you're saying Dakota is coming back from an injury, you cancel her out with Jade not being as WWE ready. Mm. You still have two on each side that can put on a show. Right. And I felt like that was my only takeaway from that match where I felt like, oh, okay, like they they're showcasing. They're not really. Getting it in, you yeah. know what I mean. So. This match also had no significant story, so it was like, yeah, th these were the matches where you're part of the locker room. It's WrestleMania. Get on in with the celebration. Get on the card. Let's put you out there. Get some TV time. Get you a nice outfit. Get you a nice entrance, and contribute to the allure and presentation Over the of tag WrestleMania. Camps. We didn't even have a tag team champion match, so this was a three women tag team right. match. If this, if it's WrestleMania, and you want to. Say over the tag champs, why didn't they defend on on WrestleMania? I think it was for what you just mentioned. They wanted to just show it was a uh, showcase. Yeah. yeah, it was a showcase, pretty much. Uh, next up for the Intercontinental Championship, we have Gunta versus Sami Zayn. Mm, phenomenal match. My only my only drawback from this match was literally Red's fault. Jay, why? What I do? Your bingo card had me rooting for a rope break. <laughs> And the whole time, I swear to you, I'm like, yo, I'm going to see a Boston Crab from Gunther. He didn't even pull that off. <laughs> I was happy that Sammy Zane pulled it off. But I swear to you, the whole time, I'm like, yo, when is he going to? When is he going to? And That's it never you happened. You just needed that rope break. I needed the rope break and solos <laughs> interference, and that never happened. Shouts out to the winners. You know, no, 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 no shade. But, um... As a fan watching the match, that was like my biggest concern. Like, yo, where's the where's the rope break? But I will say this. The bingo card took away from really experiencing yes, the match. Yes. I like Gunther okay. being freed up now from the, the IC picture because you definitely know mm -hmm. he's a main eventer. But um, I'm a little confused as to where they view Sammy. Even though he did win and he beat a champion that mm -hmm. was legitimate, I thought Sammy was going to compete for the WHC. But seeing him win this is kind of like, okay, you know. Yeah. It is. It was a great match. Classic match. Shouts out to Sammy. Profiling. It was, a, it was a, a match that built his profile as saying, like, he's a legitimate wrestler. Mm. But um, that's my honest take. Yeah. I think it was a beautiful match. Gunther talking to that man's wife. Getting us all invested. Like, the Seneca was so loud yeah, at this yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> it was a great match. My my girl was sitting there with me, and she was like, Stop talking to his wife! <laughs> Stop talking to his wife! You need to win it <laughs> Yo, yo. So, to see that emotion coming out of a casual, casual fan, yeah. it's like, damn. I'm glad that I get to sit here and be cool because that's what I'm feeling. Exactly. And I'm I usually I'm not that fan. You know, I I watch wrestling, I enjoy it. I, I get my my um I, I, I get my energy up on the inside pause. Yeah. And no diddy. <laughs> <laughs> um it, it was a great match. Great to see Sammy um get his moment. And once again, this WrestleMania has been teaching me. Patience, because what Triple H has been doing, the long term booking, it's been working. When they do these, uh, when they do these recaps before the matches at WrestleMania, you see the significance of every seed that's been planted throughout the year, right? And it's always been like that for wrestling, but I think sometimes it used to fall in place by accident. Mm -hmm. One quick question: now, Do you think it would have hit the same if Chad Gable would have won? You could plug and play either one of them. It's just the story really is who's going to defeat Gunther for the champion. Who's going whoever defeats him is going to get that pop. Unless it was somebody that unless it was somebody like a excuse me. Like like a Miz who just all right, we need to get the title. Put some off respect of him. on the Miz. He would have broke the record for the most title reigns as IC champion. Put some respect on the Miz, please. I think right now it's like um, 
people are too worried about what was going to be the outcome of the match. I'm looking at what's going to be the future of the title because now it opens up the floor for such a a, a, a competitive mid card. Yeah, you get, you get a uh, like I said, you get Sam, you get Chad, you got Jay. If he's you know you get to that mix, you get Dominic, you get Ricochet. Mm -hmm. Now that whole mid card like Dominic. is open to, yeah. for for it. So it's it's actually a a a good run from here out out in the future. Uh, and lastly, we get to close it out on night one with the Bloodline versus Cody and Seth, which ran for 44 and 35 seconds. 44, and the majority of it was entrances. That shit. <laughs> and just quickly, um, that advertisement during the whole match was fucking annoying. It was so distracting. That which American one? Home Shield. The, oh, it was around so the barricade. Bright. Yeah, very loud. It, it was very, very distracting. Loud. But your takes. We see the direction that WWE is going in. It's like taking a direction of actual sport uh juggernauts mm -hmm. where you have you know the ads around the um the 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 court and UFC the field. does it right UFC does it the NBA does it like that that's what it looked like it reminded me of the, the NBA. prime logo in the middle of the ring wasn't distracted because they did it exactly the way it, it wasn't colorful it was just in black outline good yeah. easy Done. still think it should have been slim jim that got that but well once again slim jim pulled out when shit got rough so we're gonna be talking and about came, loyalty. And came running back in Logan but Logan Paul is literally <laughs> Here as a full time wrestler, he is officially a full time yeah, wrestler. Yeah, He's yeah, not a part timer. Yeah, yeah, let's let's get this shit going. Um, the bloodline match with Cody and Seth, I was surprised that it went to forty five minutes. Yeah. I was surprised that it went that it, entrances included and all because the entrances were amazing. Um, the Rock entrance, walking fire. through the fire, fire. literally, it, it was fire. <laughs> I have a bone to pick with the Rock, Mama Rhodes, man. <laughs> I, I just have to take a moment of silence for that because like the, the Mama Road shit is so legendary <laughs> it's Mama Road Mama Road but I have a I have a bone to pick with The Rock this motherfucker is really walking around here with a championship belt hey, hey, as if hey, he won now. it because hey, Muhammad Ali gave him the blessing to use the moniker, the people's champ. The belt is fire. 30 years ago. The belt is fire. I expect Red to have it in three months. The belt I is fire. Tells, sells a toy. <laughs> the belt is fire. Him walking to the ring with it as if he won it from somebody just so that the bloodline could look more aesthetically pleasing. Obviously, you care about the aesthetic of a belt. So anybody could go out there and buy a fucking belt and walk out there even yes if they no. ain't champion. Yes this no. nigga is not champion. He walked out to the ring with a Lifetime Achievement Award. <laughs> they gave him a Lifetime Achievement Award. You're going to be mad when he defended in the match. Oh. And he's walking to the ring with the Andre the Giant Memorial Stop Trophy. It. Stop it. It's what he's walking out to the ring with, flaunting it as if he won it just for the aesthetic. The belt is fire. It looks fire. But to flaunt, it's a real championship belt as if he won it from somebody. He ain't losing to nobody. Now, the People only way can't. to solidify this belt is if we actually put it into contention and start a people's champion division. That's the only way. Mm. Here's, here's what I will say about that match. Contrary to popular belief, you know, I'm an honorary oos. Like I told you before the match even started, I said, I anticipate Cody Rhodes winning this match. Why? Because I felt like there was no way in hell they were going to have Cody Rose lose two nights in a row. So when I saw him win, yes, I was happy. I got to rub it in everybody's noses at the Seneca. I was the only person besides Sean. Shout out to Sean. And um, it was one other person. Forgive me if I can't remember your name. But in my core, I was just like, damn, Cody might do a night two. Because <laughs> he lost night one. So, I, I, you know, for me, it was, it was, that match did everything it needed to do. Yeah. From the nostalgia perspective of providing the opportunity to showcase The Rock, um, you had Rollins and Roman, and Roman going up against each other for however much they did. Like, it, it told a story that, to me, made sense for it to be the main event of that night. Yeah. I didn't even realize it was that long until it got pointed out statistically. Um, overall though, it was great seeing, you know, that match play out how it did. I felt like, um, there could have been a lot more done. 
there was a spot that like it's interesting to me though like when the rock tells the referee don't count out or your ass is fired to me i i, I think that like that transformed the match into a no dq match right which kind of threw me off but it made sense i guess but overall i think that from a, a um, historical perspective, that match hit all cylinders, and that's a match that will probably be replayed over and over again for years to come. Yeah, Night. shout out! Oh, sorry. shout out to The Rock for obviously he took a twenty-one minute break in the middle of the match, <laughs> but still to be in a match for that long, that man was bumping, selling, took a spear, th- took a spear. This he is giving. Like the best effort that you can possibly give, it's almost like he's back in his prime. And I think this WrestleMania run, low key, we talk about the GOAT, and a lot of times we put, I see people put Stone Cold above the rock because he didn't go to Hollywood. I see people put Shawn Michaels above the rock. I see people put Ric Flair up there. I think the rock in this run. He has turned in yeah he, he he restructured the conversation and he might be the jay-z of wrestling he solidified <laughs> he solidified it with him giving this effort to, he could have really half-assed this shit i'm surprised still, you said that being the undertaker fan listen <laughs> i am the voice of reason yes you are and i'm not going to shit on the rock even though i felt the way about him inserting himself into the main event Initially, however, this run right here solidified him as a goat. The way he got fans invested, of course, of course. there's so many people who are at WrestleMania, and yes, obviously it's trendy to be a wrestling fan right now. You could get nice T-shirts, and it's a conversation starter. You could get T-shirts that everybody <laughs> won't understand, right? But the way that he I got, got a rock people, T-shirt on, bro, he got Meek Mill out there crying. Get up. Yeah, I saw that video. Get up, bro. Get video. up. Get Meek Mill is out here. Get up. I'm surprised he didn't perform, but you know, glad. So did. going into night two, um, Reem was in the building, and I want I want your thoughts on this while I do it because I have to do, take something quick. Um, Drew McIntyre versus Seth Rollins. That whole match in a whole to be there for it because I know everything else was when you get to the main event is everything, but for that. And what occurred during and after that match? What was like the feel going on at that time? So can I can I ask this question before? Did you get there on time? I did. I, did. <laughs> did okay. I was in the building time? at least by six thirty. Okay. All right. So, so here's what I will say. Right. Um, CM Punk. I don't know if it was. I, I didn't watch. I didn't rewatch night two, but CM Punk came out around like six fifty five ish. Okay. Yep. I don't know if it was televised, but he when he it came was. out. Loud pop. Mm-hmm. Right? It was on the pre-show. So um, from there, it was kind of like, all right, the crowd is ready. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie. The match that Rollins and McIntyre had under delivered from a technical standpoint, but I do get that they were trying to showcase that all right, Rollins is hurt, he's not gonna be hundred percent. But like they could have did a little bit more. Um, Drew did get his flowers from the crowd. There was a Drew chant. Everybody was chanting, chanting, chanting. Um, was there you deserve a chant? I think there was a you. I, I, I think I he may have gotten. Twice. I started it twice. I'm not even gonna lie to you. I was rooting for Drew the whole entire match, even though I'm a Seth Rollins guy. When CM Punk attacked him, the whole mood changed. Like it was like people were just like, "Oh shit, what is happening?" Because obviously you you saw him getting attacked, whatever, whatever. But when Damien Priest music hit, it was like, oh, shit. I swear to you, bro. It was like a mixed reaction that, like, most mixed reactions don't make sense. But this one made sense because it was just like, damn, we were just rooting for Drew. Yeah. Now we really want to see Damien Priest pull it off. When Damien won, I swear, all you heard was, holy shit, holy shit. Holy, because it literally like took away from Drew, yeah, and put the focus on Damian Priest. Which to me, I remember saying to Bree, I was like, "Shouts out to my shorty." I remember saying to her like, "Yo, did that just really fucking happen?" And all she kept saying was, 
You see the pride of a man. He should have just went back to the locker room. He would have had his day. But no. <laughs> and the whole time I'm just like, yeah, but what the fuck? I feel bad for Drew. Like I, I walked away feeling like, yo, I'm hyped because I'm, I'm I'm I fuck with Judgment Day. Mm -hmm. But that crowd, like to me, that crowd saluted Damian Priest the same way that they saluted Drew McIntyre. Yeah. And CM Punk walked away as a legitimate baby face because he solidified that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So shouts out to that match. Um my last thought. I don't know what the ceiling is for Damian Priest as a world heavyweight champion is, but for that moment, I would put that number two behind Dolph Ziggler's cash in. No, sorry, number three. Because number one was Dolph Ziggler's cash in. Number two is Seth. No, matter of fact, number four. Dolph Ziggler's cash in. I got a tie for Edge's Edge, cash in. Because that was the first official one. Yes. And then Seth Rollins is there. And then you put. I like Big E's cash in too. We might have to revisit that on another yeah, episode. Yeah. But overall, the crowd was fucking with it. They, 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 they supported um, Damian Priest. And to me, I think that was a the perfect way to segue into the new era, if you will. Yeah. Um, for that match, I thought it was very interesting. I just feel like WWE was clicking on so many levels because you're right, Drew did get his flowers. He did. And it was enough time. Six minutes was enough time for him to get flowers. Five. Five minutes was enough time for him to get flowers crazy, and receive it and feel it and be emotional. Like, he really, I genuinely think he got his WrestleMania moment. I feel like he got it. With that time that they let breathe for him to celebrate and then Damian Priest come out. Everybody who was there, even Seth, got their appreciation from the fans. Seeing, yeah, I was watching in the crib. The KRKs was on full blast, so that sound was... <laughs> Like I was in the arena with y'all, and this is one thing that I I have to watch my mute, my wrestling with the sound. If it's a WrestleMania, I have to hear it with the sound. I have to hear the commentators. I don't know how I'll ever be able to do a WrestleMania because I need the full televised production experience. You'll be able to do it because the crowd. No, I also know that like being around other wrestling fans is enough is a different. Feeling, bro. There right. Was, so, not not to cut you off, but there was a moment where I don't know if it got caught on TV, but they were chanting very loudly, "Turn the light off." Yeah, and then they turned it off, <laughs> and then because it was once it got dark. Yo, uh, I'm telling you, it was glaring in your I, eyes. I didn't, I didn't get hit with the light, but I saw, I heard the sections, and I saw the sections. Yeah, and it was legitimate. Like it was just literally just it, beaming on you. Right. That alone provides an extraness. To the event, mm -hmm. and I'm telling you, you go to any of the big four. The only big four that I'm missing is the Rumble. I would love to go to the Rumble next year, depending on where it is. I didn't go to St. Louis because whatever, but <laughs> <laughs> I would. That's the only big four that I'm missing. If you count Money in the Bank, that's the big five. But yeah, yeah. Um, nah. Gr I think it was a great match. Obviously, Seth Rollins was injured. Um, came back from a, what was it? An MCL, MCL injury, and back, and back injury. So. You know, this time off is well deserved for Seth Rollins. I'm interested to see how he reinvents himself. I'm I'm confident in what's to come. Hopefully, he doesn't come back with the same shtick. Maybe he can. I look forward to Seth Rollins' entrances. I want to see him and Becky do like Edge and Leader type shit. That can be a little nauseating for me because it can feel forced. And if it doesn't feel natural, I think it works better with heels. A lot of things work he better. Come back as a heel. He's definitely gonna come back as a heel because he's definitely gonna screw up with Cody. Your mic not. It's either that or it's um, it's him against Roman. Could be that. Could yeah. be that. Too. Could yeah. be that. Yeah. Or remember they the, remember in, the draft is coming. Or up they soon, throw so. him into the 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 Drew uh Punk situation too. Right. Yeah. Um. For me, first of all, shout out uh, shout out to all the assholes in Philly. You guys are fucking you guys are annoying. I swear to you. <laughs> yeah, you guys were so bad during the Hall of Fame. It was so it was nauseating. It's just so uh God, the disrespect is just dreadful. Disrespect to who? It, it went at 
after Heyman, they didn't give a fuck. They did. They, they, they talked to everybody. It was so many. It was so much talking. I was yeah, like, they talked to everybody. How do I everybody. hear that from this side of the team? Yeah, it was just, it was just fucking rude. And if they keep doing that shit, they're gonna end up taking it away from the fans. They're gonna, they're gonna end up doing that shit anymore. They're just gonna probably just keep it to the talent. Um, was it a bad idea to have Heyman go first? I was gonna ask that. Um, uh, no, because we, they know Paul would have been long winded as he was, and which it was a great speech anyway. But then. It, it wasn't just too long, and people would have just been zoned out and tired of it anyway. But it was great. It was better to just. just How do you feel off. about Mania being in potentially Minnesota next year? It's in a dome, so that that you don't have to worry about being cold. Oh, yeah, it's, yeah, that's it. Um, and that what they're seeing with the fans as well. I mean, I never seen fan base turn so quickly, especially with a cash in, and. You know, I hear motherfuckers say anything about Damian Priest for the longest time. As soon as he cashes in, now he's a bisexual fucking Undertaker. <laughs> he he he's a jobber. <laughs> he's all this shit, and I'm like, guys, you guys really don't understand like what's the science and the reasoning for wrestling. And when you get a title, it's a rep it's a representation of your hard work, what you put in, the draw, what you can be able to do with it, what you what, what can be possible, what eyes you're gonna put to it now. He was at the Yankee game the next fucking day. Mm -hmm. Aaron Judge. Yeah, I mean, he's probably gonna be the fucking godfather of the Puerto Rican Day Parade and shit. Like it's yeah. it's gonna be that's what you you, you, you know, you, you got a guy who started in wrestling, he was 300, almost 300 some pounds or more. He was more, he was 300 some pounds, punishment Martinez, he cut the weight. He put the work in, and the higher ups there, they acknowledge that they see that. And a lot of that time, it happens with all of them, with all of these guys. He's from New York. Yeah, yeah. he's a New yeah, York guy. Is. He's from the Bronx. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, Red is definitely showing his Puerto Rican side right now. But you know what? <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> but no, but no. At the same time, which by the way, it, it, what were you doing? Let's just say the majority of the people who, who who walked out champs and were winners that night were Latinos. Okay. Let's, let's just run it down quick. We got Damian oh, Priest, right? Cody Rhodes. Cody Rhodes, who's half Cuban. Get the fuck, yo. He's, he's Cuban. Cuban. No, 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 Cuban. Stop it. You got, you got Bailey. You got I, Bailey. I'll give you Bailey. You got Bailey, right? I'll give you Bailey. You got uh, Rhea Ripley. What? She's, she's, like she's mommy. Get the <laughs> fuck out of here. And you got Sami Zayn. Sami Zayn. He's he, like, El Generico in Ring of Honor. So, no, yes, no, yeah. no, 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 no. <laughs> No, 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 no. You tried it. You tried it. <laughs> All right, three out, of, three out of five, eight, three, three out of five, eight, back. Three out of five, eight, back. Three, My, yes. Yeah, that was generic. Three out of five, eight, back. No, but seriously, but it's, it's not a bit, it's, I never see such a quick backlash for anything. Oh, he's a jobber. Come on, guys. You guys but, are fucking You know what's crazy? The internet fans say shit for shock value. I don't think yeah. they actually believe that. Oh, no, it, yeah. If you see the genuine response, I yeah. didn't get that response. Right. I, I think they were happy for Damian. Yeah, I think yeah. most people were happy for Damian Priest. I think niggas just need to get their they jokes off. Yeah, I'm not but, a fan of the extensions and the eyeliner, but uh, yeah, but I understand how yeah. the Boricuas and Dominicano I will do. say... They, they but it's get, also the gimmick. He's also no, a, but they're expressive. Like, I know some yeah. Puerto Rican straight men with <laughs> extensions in their hair. I know that. I know that for yeah. sure. The stadium reaction was the same when Drew won. On the standpoint of obviously he's presented as a heel, but you're happy for either a new face or someone who legit deserves it because mm -hmm. he did get the you deserve a chance. Yeah, I would have loved to have heard it because like the biggest pop I've ever heard in my life was when Dolph crashed it. When yeah. I was there yeah, that, that shit. I would that love to. We got to put a little note. Yeah. We got to. What was the best cash it, Yes. Right. Right, damn. That should have been our um, yeah. best March Madness tournament yeah. breakdown. All right. So leading into the next match, we had the street fight be between the Pride and... um um. The, the final testament, which you guys could go through like quick. I got to I, I definitely I, went to the bathroom on this match, yeah. but you were it's in so the funny you said that because so um funny story. Where we were sitting, we saw signs that said that um alcohol wasn't allowed, right? And I was I remember I was talking to my shorty Bree at the time, and I kept telling her, I'm like, yo, listen, we might have to sneak the bear in. But if I'm gonna go get beer, I want it to make me. I want to at least be lit for the Roman match, right? So I knew EO Sky was before Roman. And when she saw Bobby Lashley came, match number two, 
he kept up. Yo, this is the bathroom break. <laughs> this is where we yeah. go to the concessions there. And I felt so bad because I felt like, yo, I fuck with the pride. I, I fuck with the street profits. I fuck with Bobby Lashley. I'm not really a fan of B Fab, but I swear he laughing. But what wasn't this going against his? It's thought when you brought Bobby to the bathroom. Yeah. yeah exactly. But here's the thing. That, that's why I was so conflicted. Because I'm like, I'm about to fucking go to the bathroom on this. Like, we go wait. We ended up going to the bathroom on, um, we missed the entire AJ Logan, uh, AJ, um, LA Night Match. LA Night Match. <laughs> Great match, too. Was it? <laughs> I, I missed the whole thing. I swear to you. We, we, we were, we were walking around. But Well, I'll just say this. It's an for the for the street fight. They were, they were throwing them. Like, I, I did they get that sentiment them. from they the kitchen. Them. Those fucking, those fucking kendo sticks. I believe um, um, Dawkins took one in the like took a, a, a kendo like straight up, bang, right in the middle of the fucking head, like crazy. Like yeah, they they were throwing, they were throwing it, they were doing, they were they were doing handling business. But I felt like that in hindsight, that shit could have been done better because. You know, but then you have Bully Ray pull up. He was the ref, and that made it. And it make no sense. It's in Philly, it's ECW. In Philly, yeah. it's, a, it's an ECW type match. It's a Philly match. Oh. Yeah, that's, a, that's a, how that's do we mean. market this and give this the yeah. best product possible? How do we make yeah. sense of us being in this city? You make Jason Kelsey the special guest ref, and I'll tell you another thing too. Um, it ties into a 2K24 because that he's in the DLC next month. The Dudleys are in the DLC. You make Jason Kelsey the DLC. That satisfies everybody. Oh, please. They're the worst DLC. So how do you feel about the match? Well, the fucking table broke when they put somebody on it, which kind of... Hey, here's what I say about the match. Fucking B-Fab and Scarlet went through a fucking table. Yes. B-Fab got to hit the... he. She got to hit the ring off camera and figure out every time she hit that scissor kick how not to fall with her opponent. <laughs> I'm sorry. That, that's my only take on B-Fab. I haven't really seen her technically grapple, so I don't know if she can do more than that. But every time she hits that move on Scarlet, she falls with Scarlet. I have a problem with that. Hmm. I, I, B-Fab is like Ashanti after the murder ink uh, <laughs> indictment. Nah, I ain't going to do that. Like Ashanti. Yeah. a legend. Let's let, 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 no. let Ashanti's clearly a legend, and I wanted to see B Fab win, but I don't like the fact that they just snatched up and they put her with the put other. Bianca Belair in there. N- Whoa, yo! Oh my! I know a lot of people are saying that, but I don't. She, she, she's got to stay away from with that. With Montez and Dawkins, and it would have made so much Lashley, more sense. And Bobby she has Lashley. the chemistry with her husband, and I don't know if he was in the wedding. She but... don't need to be with Dawkins to do that. It don't need to be a threesome with fucking Bianca Belair in the middle. It need to be Montez and Bianca. And this needs to happen during the hell run. I don't want to get too long-winded on this. This needs to happen during the hell run so that we can solidify Montez as a top star. He's only going to shine once he's allowed to have that personality and talk freely, which most hills are. I agree. It shouldn't be he, he's with like- a no-eyebrow-having, milk-dud-head, Bobby Lashley, Yo. who can't fucking speak in a mic. Crazy. So you're saying Montez Ford is like Rocky Maivia right now? <laughs> no he needs to get the fuck away from Bobby Lashley that would mean he would have to get away from um, Dawkins too okay wow interesting take. Mm-hmm. I mean yeah it's Next about match. time <laughs> Uh, you went to the bathroom on this one, so there was L.A. Knight versus A.J. Styles. I, I didn't for me, see this which I, which I, I, I thought it was a really good man. It, the, the match for me, it looked like men were fighting. Mm-hmm. Like, really? Yeah, it was like you were kind of getting that sense that if you didn't know that they didn't like each other, like there they would be something there. So you know, they, L.A. Knight, they, they, they run in the back, in the head, the like, back <laughs> for, to, to see who to to see who is going to be the number one contender, right? But um, this match resembled a TNA match. Right. Both from TNA. Right. Th- that's, that's what I'm saying. And it's not bad. That, it, that's, actually, that's not that's a bad a compliment. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It was, it was like this. This is being presented a little bit different. It was great. The chemistry that they had in that, the pacing of that match was amazing. 
they, I legitimately was getting bare popcorn when this match happened. Why would you leave during LA Night and AJ Styles? That is disrespectful. <laughs> I'm not leaving in a match with AJ Styles. What the fuck? Look, you stayed yeah. for a match during... You got too much pride. <laughs> you stayed during a match during a pride. Bro, and left during, if it was up to me, AJ we would have left during the for, Logan Paul match. <laughs> Bro, we would have left during the Logan Paul match. AJ Styles for 15 years has been arguably the greatest wrestler on the planet. Yeah. And you leave during his match and stay during a nigga... Bobby that, Lashley hurts the mic every time he speaks into it. Yo, and Mike <laughs> aside, during his fucking match. Mike aside, from a heavyweight standpoint, Bobby Lashley delivers with whoever he's in the ring with. Are you like some type of recipient on Bobby Lashley's <laughs> GI Bill? Like, what the fuck <laughs> benefits are you getting from? I don't see why you hate Bobby Lashley. I don't hate him. I think he's a great superstar. I don't need him to talk or fuck up anybody else's momentum because MVP they need him on TV. In. No, I agree with that. bring MVP in and put him where next to Bobby. Yeah. No, it, it, they tried it already. That was and it doesn't Bobby work. Lashley. No, nigga. Sit, he needs to be it. a producer of matches for big men. Wow. He needs to sit the fuck down, bro. He's taking too much TV this time. I respect Bobby, but I cannot deal with this nigga just not knowing how to play a fucking <laughs> character on TV. Red, so I can't deal please. with it. So speaking of, we get the the, <laughs> the triple threat for the United States Championship. We get uh, Randy Orton, Kevin Owens, and Logan Paul. Amazing, I'm, man. I'm I'm surprised from the standpoint of I thought either Randy or Kevin would have won, but my my I've been the biggest Logan Paul supporter on this platform, you know, since the very beginning. Honestly, since I saw him step foot in the ring, I I, I shook my finger and I said, "Yo, that boy got some." I've been saying he's Edge, he's Prime Edge, he's Prime Rated R Edge. No pun intended. <laughs> I just realized what I did but he's he's an extension of what that edge character is in today's market the only thing that's missing from him is a faction or at least a manager that can boost him they're up they're kind of working with a faction because A-Town Down Under they, they fucks with him so they kind of time with they gotta that. they gotta pair them up more yeah. for it to feel legitimately yeah. but I don't the only thing with me is that I don't understand why he keeps having these YouTubers in the prime suit take bumps. It's that's why because that's the audience. I'm telling you, the moment that they showed who he was, whoever was in the at Seneca that day, immediately went like speed. That was speed. Yeah. Everybody yeah. thought it was yeah. KSI. I yeah. thought it was KSI too. And when it was Bree, Bree, Bree kept saying, "Oh, that's speed." And I'm, I'm like, going, speed. and even I know who yeah. speed is. I know, yeah. when, and it's like barely because you know I'm on the peripheral of it. But I was like. Oh, that shit is fucking hilarious! Yeah. But that's why, because of that's the the the, the that's the, how the, the the reaction you get. Yeah. That's how they bring so many eyes to us when they start going on a impression run. When they're like, "Oh, we got this many eyes." Look at the people that they bringing in. Look at what they're tapping into, and they've been doing this for the last two three years. Did you see you bought so him a car again? for taking the RKO? Yeah, that was. <laughs> yo. By the way, that he took a hard he um, took a hard table, kick. Yeah, and then he that took table a hard didn't break. Mm -hmm. He took a hard RKO. And I think Randy did that on purpose because <laughs> Speed is one of them LaMelo ball niggas, right? When you get them on TV and you give them a mic, they don't they, know what the fuck they're they gonna say. They next. go extra, and it's like you're not understanding my business and you're fucking up the look for this. This is my prediction. Maybe they do fuck with speed, but the amount of cursing he was doing in that moment when he's speaking to Randy Orton is yeah. like. Yo, like, chill. Here's what I will down. say. I don't know if it got caught on camera, but the amount of hydration drinks that got shouted out as a counter <laughs> to Prime. Yo, bro, I wrote it down. They shouted out water, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, Gatorade. Hold on, wait. I got I to gotta see if I got it. <laughs> I wrote it down. I swear to you. In the crowd. These were crowd trans. These, these were crowd, crowd trans, bro. <laughs> wow. Hold on, wait, 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 wait. I do, I, like I said, I do have to say that um, that 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 sense of what Randy did, it reminds me of what um, what um, Piper did to Mike uh, to Mr. T years ago. Yeah, that he really didn't like him. Mm -hmm. And when they did WrestleMania two, when they went to fight, yeah, you know, it was supposed to be staged. <laughs> Fucking Piper was he really the throwing shit out of him. He, he was throwing. Yo. He was for real with it. Cause Speed curse, he said fuck like four times, mm -hmm. and the camera's right there. So my sense is like, I would curse too if I know I'm about to get put. 
do an RKO on the table. Okay, I respect that. But you get it, what you, you got to hype yourself. I'm going to hype myself like, up to make sure yeah. I eat this. I respect <laughs> that. Because speed, he can't be no taller than me. Yeah, you yeah, feel me? Yeah. He is annoying as fuck. So yeah. it was, I respect what he does in the streaming world. But as far as his personality, it's annoying to me. It's over the top. Mm. So to see him go through the table, it all makes sense. I wasn't mad at anything that they did. I think the partners that they work with during this re WrestleMania, they did it very tasteful and they went over the top in the moments where they needed to go over the top. But so, this prime shit is Logan Paul. He's been here putting in the work. Fuck it. Let me put my people on. Triple H is, is the cool uncle. Bring mm. the weed to the table. Bring yeah. the niggas yeah. to the cookout. Here's, here's the chance. Gatorade. They chanted for Gatorade. They chanted for H2O. There was an H2O chant. I heard that. They chanted for Powerade. Pepsi Zero, we want water, Coca Cola, and the honorable mentions turn the lights off and we can't see shit. <laughs> That's for the lights. Wow. <laughs> but all that took place during the Logan Paul match. No. Great match. Um, it was a great match, though. Shout out to Logan. I didn't think that he was going to retain. I thought this was going to be Randy's moment. And when he retained, that confirmed to me that they trust Logan Paul and yes, he yes, is yeah. going to be a major player in this uh, Logan, I mean, in this Paul Levesque era. era. Logan Paul Levesque era. Which, which, right. um, which, just quickly, there was a lot of love being showed to uh, Paul Levesque, especially during Paul Heyman's speech when he says he's yes. a Paul Levesque guy. That was, yeah. that was major. And it that was, was touching. Was very touching. At the same time, it makes me nervous. It does. Yeah. Why? Because it's making me feel as though that they're trying to protect him in case they come and go, they're gonna come after him. In case with the with mm. the with the shit with on um, the, the investigation with Vince. With Vince, yeah. Yeah, if they find out that he knew stuff and he's hiding things. Because even when Stephanie opened up the show, I was like, Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, that threw me yeah. off. I was like, oh the crowd, I'm never gonna lie, the crowd reaction was super mixed. Yeah, it was like super oh, mixed. Okay. Like and nobody then, knew whether the chair, right? They thought it was a troll. They were like, Oh shit! Yeah. So it, 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 it's kind of making me worry, and it's seen as all like how, especially with how um, what happened later on in that night, what what was you know what, what, what with the announcement that came, I was just like, oh, please don't fuck this up, please, like like you know just yeah, I hope we're in a good yeah, space. I hope we're in a good space, but yeah. So um, leading up to the next match, we get Bailey versus EO Sky for the uh, SmackDown Women's Championship. Under delivered. I don't know what the fuck is up with the Japanese women in WWE. They got to pull their acting together. They got to pull their personalities together because I love EO. I love her music. I think EO's a great talent, yes. She's number Super. five behind whoever you consider the current uh, four horse women. She's so little, but yes, yeah, she can work. She, she can work. Yeah. I love I love EO. I don't like the acting that they it just seems like too much let me ask you her this, entire walk to the ring she was like from a size perspective seems like a t-rex <laughs> who do you put who do you got in the straight up rapper. 101 alexa bliss or eo sky eo sky Ooh. yeah eo sky there's no and Bliss is not bad at all. Like Bliss, she's not. Bliss, but Io is she's great in the ring. She she's amazing. Oscar amazing. I I thought you she was like gonna Io act. Sky? I said Io Sky. You ain't like her interest. I like the over animation. Io, yeah. No, I love. I just said I love her entrance. I don't like the person, the persona that they take on when they walk to the ring when they do this shit. Why not? Bro, they all do it. Oscar <laughs> does it. That's what I'm saying. They look like they off the E. <laughs> yeah. wow. They look like they off the E, bro. Like it's that. a persona that's associated with their culture. What is that? Um, is that the, like the drunken master? Yes. Is that not, what it not is? That per se, but it's almost like they're they're having sort of like a not an out of body experience, but when Oscar she paints the face. It's a different version of Oscar compared to the Oscar that we know. Okay, so you know how Finn Balor comes out as the demon? Demon, yeah. Yes. Right? That's cool. He's theatrical. It feels like the Phantom of the Opera. Mm -hmm. And even when Oscar used to come out and, you know, her entrance, it was like very Broadway-esque. I can rock with that. When they start trying to dance, 
The music slap. <laughs> Come on, EO Sky interest slap. EO Sky be like this. EO Sky. I'll say this. I'm not saying anything about her music. I'm saying their presentation in the walk to the ring. That was the wrong They're time. Very, it's very K-pop. Like kind of, but it doesn't feel natural. Yeah. It feels like this is what the English people want me to do. That Let me try to do this the best that I can for Bailey to debut a new interest. Music. Okay, now I will say that that the, the whole interest. arena kind of felt like, who the fuck is this? Well, which, by the way, LA Knight. I mean, um, AJ debuted a, a new interest as well, and I'm like, I yeah, I, I, I gotta, I, I gotta get used to that. Speak yeah, on that. I said I gotta, I gotta get used to that. But I will say the Bailey interest music. I was just like. What the fuck is this? Well, that, I actually like a new song. But that and the entrance itself was very heelish. Being brought in like a pharaoh, like on the thing. And which I realized, I mean, which I learned later was it's from a Yu-Gi-Oh card. It's a pharaoh card or whatever the fuck it is. That's, what that's does what Baby's used. character have to do with anything related to Yu-Gi-Oh? But that's that's what's from again. my understanding. But they're, they're from, geeks. So from my understanding, geeks. there is a museum, Egyptian museum in San Francisco that she had paid tribute to from that entrance. Yeah, but it was also a Yu-Gi-Oh! Yu -Oh Yu -Oh reference. Yu-Gi-Oh! Yu -Oh as well, yeah. They're geeks. Uh, they're, they, you know what I'm saying? They're, they're, the majority of the, 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 the roster that are under like fucking 40, Zelina Vega geeks. is the biggest geek out of all the women's division. I was mad at Zelina Vega. She ain't have that shit on. <laughs> <laughs> she ain't come with that shit on. She ain't had that media. thing. <laughs> Here's what I will say. Um, Bailey beating EO made sense. But I don't see Bailey having a lengthy title run just because of her positioning in the current women's division as far as like, all right, we know who they are as far as being the four horse women and stuff. She's meant to put on the next generation. Mm -hmm. I, do I see Tiffy beating her? Mm. Do I see... Jade beating her, mm. but but Naomi definitely not. I do believe that if you're going to debut a new interest music, it it kind of like his hasi new interest music. If you give someone a new interest music, that's someone that you trust for at least the next six months. I don't see Bailey's title reign lasting that long. I would have given a new interest music, but I would have did it on SmackDown. I right. I would have did it on that's but but that's when I caught the interest yeah. music. Because Loki, I didn't know that she had the new interest music for for WrestleMania until I watched it back. I thought it came during SmackDown. I was like, oh, this is a new rendition to this shit. I fuck with it. But I didn't notice that it was there for WrestleMania until I think yesterday. So um yeah. And then uh, we'll go to the closing match, which is the main event match, which is the Bloodline Rules match between Roman Reigns and... He has more than one royal family. <laughs> Come on, Reigns. One, one more time for the one time. One more time for the one time. No. One more time for the one time. Come on. You Come got on. the one. If you're watching the episode, run it back. That's all you're going to get. Adrenaline <laughs> in my soul. Something, something, Cody Rhodes. Do it all to get them off their feet. He's a Cody Rhodes. <laughs> so, this match for me in the whole had everything that uh, I pretty much thought was going to happen. Everybody pretty much knew that we were going to get the, 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 the surprises. The only one that we didn't think, we, we thought we were going to get, we didn't get. Apparently, the money didn't match right for him. But we still got a, a, a great appearance for that. Uh, just going through the match just quickly because we got to start um, tying everything up. Um, the first entrance when when, you, when when Solo comes in, uh, when Jimmy comes in, Jimmy and Jay actually made up for what they did the night before during they running for me. Especially taking that spot off the ramp, I thought it was fucking crazy. Um, who was the biggest like? What was like the biggest mark? What was the biggest moment for you during that match? I'm be honest. The biggest Rome, the biggest moment was Roman's entrance. Okay, that entrance was phenomenal. And when I saw Roman walk into the ring, it was a sad moment for me. I was like, "Damn, this is an end of an era." And I and I did say, and as you, he Roman. was walking to the ring, thank you, Roman. I saluted him. 
I acknowledge the tribal tree, the the, tri- the tribal tree. <laughs> <laughs> I acknowledge the tribal chief because this is something that was unprecedented. It was Roman rainbow cookies. But his confidence, his <laughs> his confidence walking to the ring, he looked like the best version of Roman Reigns ever. Yeah, my boy was on, ripped. By the way, you're not a fan of Cody Mask. He wasn't. He wasn't. He wasn't a fan no, of the I Cody was, Mask. But the, you know, I'm a music guy. Yeah. So. The live the version, violins. the violins, the drums, the, yeah. all of that shit. And for it to be so loud and grand mm. as it was, it was a moment I was like, damn, I kind of don't want this nigga to lose right now. I don't want him to lose because this, he was like 99% of right. what we wanted him to be. This WrestleMania walkout mm. right here. He looked like the best version of Roman Reigns. His shit talking in the match. Oh, it was great. Was phenomenal. The that best move part. Sucked. No, oh, the best part for me was when Cody pulls out the table and everybody cheers for it. Roman hits him with the with the drive by, takes the table, puts it right back on the Yep. I yep. loved it. I it's bloodline rules, it. but it's when it's on my, my time. time. I it's loved on my it. time. But when he hit Cody, he was like, I knew I wasn't winning it with that shit. That move sucked. You don't beat <laughs> nobody with that move. And you didn't hear him because you was at the fucking show. But when he yeah, said yo, that I shit. I was crying. He says, this, he says I, I do this all day. Yo. This is what I do. I do this all day. The confidence that man had is like, yo, this is what we were waiting for the entire time. And he killed this tribal chief character for the last three to four years. Four and a half. Four and a half. <laughs> whatever. Whatever, bro. <laughs> But the presentation of him at yeah. WrestleMania, he didn't wait for the beat to drop. He just walked out yep. in the midst of the wind up. And I don't know. It was emotional. I think I, I, I'm i not going to wait for a rebuttal. I'm going to say everything I got to say now. This main event was everything that a wrestling fan could dream of. It was over the top. It was the corny shit that you look for in wrestling. It was the long term booking. It was Everything the, technical the, the shield reference, the shield reference. They wrestled 20 minutes before any shenanigans even took place. Mm-hmm. So I was very grateful for that. Cody getting his moment. Um, obviously, the, the callback to Bret Hart winning and everybody hoisting up Bret mm-hmm. Hart. It was something nostalgic about that. I don't know what the fuck they on in that writing room, but they are cooking in WWE right now, and I hope it doesn't stop with just WrestleMania. Obviously, we we going to, you know, talk a little bit briefly about the direction after Mania. But I wholeheartedly believe that this was the best WrestleMania main event. And people are questioning, why The Undertaker? Why The Undertaker? The Rock was going by the final boss. I'll tell you two <laughs> reasons why The Undertaker. And Reem, I hope you're listening to me. Mm. I'll tell you two reasons why The Undertaker. The Rock was calling himself final boss. And if you think of The Undertaker... Technically, he is really the final boss. Mm-hmm. And if you think about the backstage politics, him being, uh, him th- them doing a wrestling court mm-hmm. and him being the judge, the judge. of wrestling right. court, him coming here to set the record straight and make sure that this match goes off the way that it's supposed to and be even, split, and Cody Rhodes have has a, a equal chance to win, and they just have an equal chance to fight it out like men. This made sense, even though we won it Stone Cold. This was wrestling, WWE history, all encompassed into one. And if you're not a wrestling fan where you understand the specifics or where you can interpret things a certain way, maybe you won't get it. But I was super appreciative of this of uh, this main event, and I felt treated. And I'm 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 happy that everyone, the casuals, enjoyed this as well. I'm seeing a lot of people saying, "You got me back into wrestling. Yeah. This got me back into wrestling." And it's a safe space now. Yeah. Uh, shout out to my boy Hank Flanagan for Hank's Happy Hour. Who always pulls up here. Uh, he messaged me. He says, although Stone Cold would have been the, the the obvious choice, he says, it makes sense for Taker because there's only two people that Rock couldn't really son during his career. One was definitely Stone Cold. He got the win off of him after three WrestleMania matches. He got he's, he's he was only one in uh one in three against Stone or one and two against Stone Cold. Mm-hmm. And Undertaker. He could never. He could. He couldn't. He couldn't do what he did with any of the Undertakers that would come out. So yeah. it made sense for that. Reem, you, 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 I still see your pain. So just <clears throat> let's just let's just go through this so that we could we could start embarking into the new era of WWE.
to my fellow honorary Usus. <laughs> listen all right all right all right i want to say this right we knew that eventually at some point that the rain was going to come to an end i will say this a couple things quick hitters i'm not mad that cody rhodes won i felt like more should have been done to lead up to that, um, put him through a table, you know, put him through the ring, put, put him through something. You know what I mean? Uh, you got to really hurt the tribal chief in order to beat him. Um, three crossroads consecutively. I just felt like more could have been done. Um, as far as the Undertaker. Sticking his big nose in business that did not belong. I grew to accept that, you know, the Undertaker was more of like a locker room leader for such for so many generations that it kind of made sense for him to be the one to help Cody win to signify that Cody is the new generation locker room leader. However, you want to take that. Cool. Um. The match itself, I felt like 39 was better than 40 from a, a uh, technical standpoint. I felt like there was more done in 39 than 40. Although I do get that they did wrestle the night before and, you know, whatever the circumstances may be, I felt like 40 was just more of a microwave match versus a, a um, something that you know, you can watch back and say, oh, my God, that delivered. Am I mad that Cody Rhodes won? Yes and no, because I saw the writings on the wall. Like I said, I'm on the record thinking that Cody was going to win night one. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck is this nigga talking about? I'm being what is yo, he talking listen, about? Well, my my <laughs> listen, I'm... I, 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 I don't know what our time length is right now, but it's I do. It's not good. You got. It's not so good. So let me segue into the next shit. You feel me? I I, I just want to. I just I just want to say this. So we, we transition. In any case of what would have happened at the end of that match, even if Roman won, I still would have said that that match was fucking great. You know, I still would have taken it. From what perspective? Because of the fact of what, like he mentioned before, of what they gave you. They gave you every element of what. What, what we, we love what about we love professional, professional wrestling. wrestling. The surprise. What everybody not back about and for, professional wrestling. Not knowing really what can be the outcome. What 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 can happen. The 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 you lost yourself for a minute and you actually were, you know, that you know, that feeling of a kid for a moment. You you didn't think about the what you know, the insides of a wrestling or what could happen, what's what's going to occur. So you know, and sick in his chair to the back. The throwback to the shell, to the shield Come reference. On, the pot, you know, Roman making the decision whether to hit Cody with the chair or hit Roman with, with Rollins with the chair, knowing that ten years ago he turned on them. Like uh, there was so much storytelling there. It's it's. Where does the Undertaker fit into all? This? I just mentioned it. Undertaker is one of the guys. Once again, Stone Cold didn't, couldn't pay the money. I mean, he couldn't get the money he wanted to. But at the same time, Undertaker is one of the two guys in Rock's career that Rock couldn't bully. Stone Cold, he couldn't bully, and he couldn't bully um, Undertaker. That's where it plays out. I would have rather Triple H himself come down. That would have been corny as shit. What? That would have been Triple H coming down to the ring, giving one final pedigree on the biggest WrestleMania night of all time? That would have been The nigga is... Iron Man in real life, like <laughs> exactly. he's not coming out there to do any of that. Yeah. So, so let's go into the new transition. <laughs> let's, let's go to the, the the new era. So let's let's just com uh, combine Raw and SmackDown together because it basically is the same. Yes. I think going in. Um, what's your, Mark? What's your thoughts about going into to Raw? I mean, we're going into the new era now. Uh, and let's just disregard the fucking forty minute entrance uh, the uh, promo between Roman. I mean, between Rock and Cody. Yeah. Because okay, we get it. It was commercial free. 
Rock was going to eat all that time. Uh, that's a nice belt you got there. Can I hold it? Can I hold that belt? And I'm like, this is getting... Even the crowd was like, this is awkward. This is weird as fuck. It was super weird, but I feel like The Rock was being obsessive. It was like... um, I don't know where we go with Cody after this. Don't break this. my heart again. Like, obviously, obviously, you know, Cody is going to hold the championship not for 1,316 days. He'll hold the championship for at least a year. <laughs> I'll say, right? Um... <laughs> I, I, I'm just going to make all my points now. Obviously, there's some changes in the bloodline. Um, you have Tamatanga, who just debuted on SmackDown. Uh, you have Solo Sokoa. We don't know if he's considering himself the tribal chief or if the tribal chief actually made the call mm -hmm. or if somebody else is the tribal chief. But when it comes to that word patience... We didn't really get much out of Jimmy and Jay, right? And now uh, Jimmy has been ousted out of the bloodline, seemingly, right? So this is, they're getting right into it. We're building for the next year. Roman Reigns is being set up for the biggest face run that we've probably ever seen in WWE history because he's finally going to be what Vince McMahon wanted him to be. But it needs to happen strategically. It needs to happen fluidly. And it, we don't need to rush into it because this man could go on to have another reign, not 1,300 and whatever days, but he can have like four more title reigns to where he's solidified as, you know, arguably the GOAT. The way he walked out there on WrestleMania, I'm like, I don't, I'm not ready to see mm -hmm. Roman Reigns walk away. I'm not ready to see him be more of a part-timer than, than he is now. Um, that's what I have for Cody, for Cody Roman. Um, obviously, we're moving into the Paul Levesque era, and people seem to be embracing this as such. Back to patience when it comes to Bianca, Jade, uh, everybody wanted to see them go against each other initially. I think they are about to revitalize the women's tag team division. They already came out matching. They look good together. There's a genuine bond with them. Like, they genuinely support each other. Naomi, her taking that L to Tiffany Stratton a couple months ago, right? She, um, I was knocking her for it. But when we circle back to it, her win on Tiffany Tr Stratton means more because she got her, she got her lick back. She got her lick back. And I think she was a little bit more confident on the mic during that interaction with Tiffany Stratton when she was saying, uh, she had one line. She said, she called a little girl or some shit like mm -hmm. that. And Please. it was just, it, it was just so natural. Mm -hmm. But Tiffany Stratton did have a comeback and they've been cooking. She said, and I quote, she couldn't even win a title if it glowed in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> That's nasty. You wrote that, <laughs> that is nasty. You wrote that down because the moment I was like, "All right, I'm coming around to Naomi. I get it. She about to get this win back. I gotta be a little bit more patient, right?" She cooked it with that line, but nonetheless, Naomi got her win back. So I think we're off to a great direction for um for Mania, and you know that's what I got. That's my that's my review of the after Mania week. Oh no! Just quick about you, you heard the the line <clears throat> the line that Cody did he read off as well on the opening of SmackDown. Oh yeah, yeah. who said it was uh, open mic night, bitch? Yeah, that's uh that's that that's that's his wife. Uh, <laughs> that was his wife. Also, we didn't even mention fucking Wayne showed up during the um uh, during the the Uso fight intro. That was um a little weird as well. Like yeah. I, I would have figured that like you guys would have said that maybe Meek would have done that shit. But Facts. Oh, okay. Everybody loves Wayne. He's like, I always say he's everybody Muppet or some shit. Like I, I, I fuck with Wayne. Uh, um, I'm, 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 I'm very intrigued with what's what's happening with the the bloodline thing. Jacob Fatu is signed. Looks like he's gonna be along that as well. Uh, looks like we're gonna possibly see a civil war occurring. Um, is the Rock gonna take sides in this? Is he gonna be a part of this? Um. Are we going to see a war games match with this? Possibly. Um, we'll see. And, and like I said, that, that's what I like now. It's it's not as 
predictable as we want it to be. On the Raw side, we're going to see what the shakeup is going to be like with the draft coming. The draft is going to be uh, at the end of the month. We'll see what, what, who's going to be the movers and shakers over there. Uh, to see CM Punk get involved in that match where, uh, once again, he screwed Drew over for uh, the number one contendership means a lot to that storyline as well. Uh, slowly but surely, Punk is making his way back. And we'll see how that gets involved. And I'm interested to see for both sides, what the mid card titles are going to be doing, what they're going to be doing with the U.S. title and the IC titles. The only thing that I'm really shaky about is when you mentioned about Bianca and Jade. Are they going to immediately put the titles on them and make them um, the thoroughbreds for that title now? That Stop putting the women together and get, having them really chase them to they get should. them. They yeah. should. There's no need to build them up as if they need work as a tag team. Right. It's Jade and Bianca. Mm. Put that shit on them yesterday. Oh, and by the way, Braun Breaker, um, he's, he's going to be a fucking star in three years, bro. I'm telling you. Uh, Do you uh, see that? Chem who knew that Jade and Bianca chemistry yeah. would be like this? Yeah. Uh, Did you see Jade in the ring like, yeah. beat that bitch ass. Get that. Like, it looks natural. It don't look fake at yeah. all. I don't, like, like I said, um, like I said, Braun, Braun is. Braun, I'm looking at Braun. I'm looking at Jade. Like the the new era, that that new um, feeling of the roster that's coming up, the new yeah. crop that's coming in, the younger stars. Because we're gonna see the Randy start going away soon. We're gonna see the AJs start. You know, their time their time is is coming. They know it. They're saying it themselves, and they want to see the younger stars flourish. I think that I think for the next uh, the next couple of years or so, we're gonna see. Uh, uh, a good transition with, with 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 stars, and as for Roman, I thought that um the last megastar that WWE will make and ever make is John Cena, but uh, if Roman doesn't get it, he's gonna be pretty damn close. He got it in my opinion. <clears throat> so I've been holding this in for seven days, as opposed to what the fuck you were speaking about earlier. <laughs> Let me say a couple things, right? Now, y'all know me to be an honorary oos. Y'all know me to be the ultimate bloodline supporter. I actually think this was the perfect time for Roman to drop the title. Uh, made sense from a historical standpoint. WrestleMania 40. I did think niggas was dick eating running to the ring to celebrate with Cody Rose, but... <laughs> Wow. Wow. Cody Rhodes championship reign ends at SummerSlam. <laughs> I don't know to who, but I know when. He is not walking out of SummerSlam with that title, whether that's a money in the bank cash in, whether that's a clean pin. Y'all can book that. That was the take that I was holding in for this entire recording. Now, as far as the bloodline is concerned, you know what, you know, and I want y'all to be honest about this, legitimately honest about this. What Cody Rhodes is doing now is making the WWE Championship, now that it's called that, an afterthought to the main event, which is the bloodline story. Now, I know many of you don't fuck with the bloodline. I throw my ones up every time I hear that interest music thrown up because it symbolizes greatness. Greatness. There isn't a single competitor who can hold that title now that has you tuning in saying, I want them to lose. With Cody Rhodes holding that title, we are looking at John Cena 2.0. I say John Cena 2.0 because like I've been saying it for the longest of whiles, you beat Seth Rollins in a Hell in a Cell match with one arm. You beat Brock Lesnar, which is a fucking travesty to me if you ask me. You have the fucking Undertaker who we've seen turn into Dave Chappelle Whenever there's a PLE in town, all of a sudden comes to the ring and decides to. He's not even wearing the Undertaker shit. He's wearing biker taker shit. Wants to stick his huge nose in business that doesn't concern him. Whether you want to say he hasn't bullied the Rock, bro, 
Nothing in the past four years has included Undertaker, but you decide to want to showcase yourself at WrestleMania, fine. We'll take it. But you know what I got walking away from SmackDown and Raw this week alone? Cody Rhodes is now the afterthought champion. He is the champion that we respect from a wrestling perspective. But from an entertainment value, I do not want to see my champion week in, week out, crying to the crowd. And I guarantee you this. Red, Mark, you guys are going to come on this podcast and will admit to me and the bloodline, yo, I miss Roman Reigns as champion. Nakamura entrance, because that's what this is. It is just a novelty act. (laughs) It has no substance. It has no validity. I walked away from the Raw and the SmackDown, and I said to myself, you know what this new era symbolizes? New faces. New blood. New challenges. And you mean to tell me, after watching Roman Reigns defend that title, For close to 1,400 days, we're going to get Cody Rhodes versus AJ Styles at Backlash. Y'all are going to remember this moment in time and say, well, all right, Cody got his moment, but wrestling is boring again. (laughs) Wrestling is fucking boring. Boring again. So it wasn't boring when Roman was missing four months on in? Are you fucking kidding me? I'm just asking. When Roman was champion, there was someone there that you wanted to to see lose. There was someone Roman. There was someone there that you wanted to be there. there Roman, was Roman someone who was not there. Who Roman, you to be there. Roman has the equal side time of, of TV that Brock did when Brock was champ. And everybody hated that. When shit. Roman comes back as a bigger face and that's what's than the happen. American Nightmare, which is going to happen. I don't know if he'll be a bigger face, but he will come back face, yeah. He will come back as a bigger face because the Bloodline storyline is what draws people to watch and see what happens next. What, uh, maybe- I watched this SmackDown saying to myself, okay, yeah, there's two triple threat matches that are happening to see who's going to beat Cody Rhodes. But what I walked away from that SmackDown saying is, damn, I can't wait to see what happens next between the bloodline. Now, I'm not saying that Roman should have won at WrestleMania 40. I think it was the perfect opportunity. It was number 40. It had significance. It meant something. In the grand scheme of things, when they replay it in years to come, it showcases the love and the support of the Rhodes family. So. Um, who takes Reem to the ring? Is it me or you this week? <laughs> you take, we bring Reem. I'll say this here. last point. I just want to say this last point. <laughs> I just want to say this last point. I will embrace y'all when y'all finally wake up from this American nightmare and decide to want to throw y'all ones up in the sky. I, Bro, I, I just I love the fact that I'm he saying. believes it's just like this like it's all a I'm Corey saying. Cody fandom. It's a wrestling. It's a fandom. wrestling fandom. Right? Right? Summer Slam. That's all it is. Is when he drops. Bro, I the said title. I acknowledge the tribal chief. I said that I didn't want Stop him to it, lose. Mark. It's, it's, Stop it's, it, Mark. Listen, it, it's, you it's don't got wrestling. your you it, don't got your wrestling. shares worth okay. by seeing your favorite wrestler screw the greatest of all time. So, so I don't know who Red's favorite wrestler is. Who is your favorite wrestler? I have it, it. It fluctuates. It could be anything from Bret Hart to AJ Styles to CM Punk. It, it fluctuates. So you love technical wrestling? Yeah, that's my that's my thing. And you mean to tell me Cody Rhodes was? You know what? I'll save that for an off camera discussion. Is 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 Roman oh, Reigns a more technical wrestler than Cody Rhodes? Are you he's crazy? A he's a bigger draw a than brawler. Cody Rhodes will so ever dream to be. 
outside of him competing with the bloodline. Bathroom break Look, faction. Yeah, yeah, let, yeah let, let's just let's, uh, segue into the bathroom break faction. You know who I'm nominating for the bathroom break faction? Cody Rhodes. I don't want to see my champion crying every 14 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> That was Cody Mark before the my words. Mark my words. Red, Mark, you guys are going to come on this podcast and you guys are going to say, yo, you know what, Reem? I'm actually bored with Cody Rhodes as champion. I might be bored with Cody Rhodes. I wanted a great story. And WrestleMania was the culmination of that story. We move on from Cody Rhodes by SummerSlam. I'm cool with it just as long as the story is good. Yeah. For the bathroom break, though. Cause we on we 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 yeah. overtime yeah. for the bathroom break faction. All the motherfuckers who got fired by AEW, Ooh. they Ooh. are in the bathroom break because I swear I don't know who any of them <laughs> were. I didn't even know that they work for the company. I, agree. I thought they were firing motherfuckers who work for the arenas that they go on touring. <laughs> I'm like, how are AEW firing niggas who work at the arenas? Uh, at the concession stand, they not on AEW payroll. Uh, uh, yo, this might be the first time we agree on this. <laughs> I was posting these motherfuckers to my page, and I kept saying... I thought those were your friends. Who are these niggas? <laughs> <laughs> who are these niggas? I thought he was advocating for his friends. Like, yo. Yo, I was posting these niggas, and I'm like, <laughs> yo, you know what's crazy? I seen... um, Fuck, I don't even remember his name, but there's one guy that's injured. That he had the most traction, where he's just like, "Wow, you fire somebody while they're injured." Apparently, um, Tony Khan is going to bring him back once he's healed. But I, I guess the reason why he got released in the first place was because he got injured outside of AEW. Neither here nor there. But I agree with you, bro. I, this might be the one time <laughs> we agree on the Bath and Break faction. Yo, throw all them niggas in there. Yeah, no, oh, that's <laughs> like, yo, no, no, no. Oh, that's hilarious. And then the fucked up thing is that he fired them on April Fool's Day. Like that's yeah. crazy. It's like. Wow. Yeah, I'm sorry. We gotta let you go. Ha <laughs> ha! Very funny. I know it's Cody Rhodes is in there too. Nah, we real though. We, your ass is fired. Cody Rhodes is in there too. I'm uh, sorry. Uh, you guys are gonna come around and say, "Yo, you know what? I kind of miss Roman Reigns." Listen, it's okay. We we gonna miss Roman Reigns because we don't. This was a great story, and this cemented him. All that work that he's we put, thanked him. We said that's it. what I'm yeah, saying. Every they were saying thank you, Roman. Job, Nobody yeah. is against Roman hey, Reigns. They, 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 Everything they that him. they wanted him to be, it literally he got he did to that it. moment. He did it. WrestleMania, he is at his peak. He is at his peak. He's not declining. He's going up even more. So <laughs> SummerSlam. Pop culture it. rumble. My bathroom break. Wait, wait. I'll just oh, yeah, my, my, bad, bad. my bathroom break, honestly, just quickly is. Whatever the fuck is going on with this Willow Nightingale shit in AEW. Wow. This shit is just losing wow. audience members and it's turning me off as well. Mind you, know you I, I fucks with Willow. We've met. She's cool peoples and everything. But right now, especially with this Monet stuff, and by the way, woof with that. That's um, the reason why. Yeah, it's... it's <laughs> especially knowing... That's the- she... <laughs> That's the- Yo, Mark is doing the smile. <laughs> there goes the smile. She ain't... She ain't win. She ain't even get a match as of yet, and she's already going for titles. I think, uh, you know what? Whatever, man. Um, shout out to Mark Briscoe who won the um the Ring of Honor Championship this past week. But shout yeah. out to uh, uh, John Moxley who uh, accomplished something that no other wrestler has accomplished too. Well, in this era, because in older eras, people have won a WCW WWF title and a New Japan title, so that's different. So it's it's just this I, era. I can't name one. Yeah, it's just this era. We'll, name we'll, one. Yeah, we'll Vader. We will look at some stuff like that. We will look at yeah, yeah. There's there's a few of us. <laughs> yeah, there there. We could we could, we, could, we could actually throw a little shade. Willow on Willow Nightingale but. reminds me of someone who worked. You know the carnival that they used to do on Nickabaka around May. <laughs> disrespectful. She remind me of somebody who works there. That makes the, that makes the, the con candy pack them up. The pack them up. All right, so. <laughs> Pop culture rumble. We got the pop culture rumble. So the um, pop culture rumble, for those of you who don't know, is anybody who you feel like needs to be called out to the ring that's outside of the wrestling IWC community that needs to catch a double, a couple stunners. Or in it. Or in it. Or in it, yes. A couple stunners, maybe some pedigree, onto the thumbtacks, rock bottom through the announcer table. Red, who you got? Uh, thank you for letting me go first because then I gotta start getting ready. Um, off the rip, whoever the fuck idea was to air that CM Punk Jack Perry footage. Shit. 
whoever's fucking idea that was. Tony Khan, bring your ass because we know it's you because you still buttholes upset at the fact of what um, occurred with that incident as well as what the fuck Punk said in an interview, which, by the way, pretty much detailed exactly what he fucking said. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. and even with that interview, he didn't really shade him. He actually said he's a good dude. He's a good guy. He's just not a boss. And, you know, that shit was happening. That's what it is. And even Punk sat there and said, yo, I want out. Let mm -hmm. me go out. No, no, no. We're not going to let you out. But whoever thought it was the, by the way, they only fucking received like 810,000 which was the anticipation on it. it it was it they usually would get in the millions for shit like this not even it was a blip and then at the end of it seeing punk chance yeah and now you know what i'll save the other person for the the the, the, the next episode but yeah um tony khan it, it, it is you yeah because i even heard that uh the young bucks were throwing him on the bus and saying like yeah they didn't agree with they it. didn't agree with it so Bring your ass in the ring, and it's it's gonna be a squash match because it's gonna be easy. You just gonna get you're gonna get a GST and that's it, a GTS, yeah. and that's it. It's done, gone. Yeah. What's up, Bob? I'm bringing Tony Khan. That's who I was gonna bring to the ring. <laughs> yeah. Tony Khan, you are in the gauntlet, my brother. This is an Iron Man match, and this is an Iron Man match. I don't know if we ever seen a non-competitive Iron Man match. Sixty minutes, non-competitive Iron Man match. Tony Khan versus me. Me. The bruiser weight. Okay. Tony Khan, bring your ass to the ring. I'm be gonna break your fingers so you can stop tweeting. We're gonna stomp your brain so that hopefully it can function properly because this is not handling your company, your professional wrestling company, like a boss. And I want to know what drugs y'all doing back there in gorilla position. Because what will convince you? that people want to see this from you as opposed to putting time. some effort in and doing this shit. What made you think that the fans weren't going to fuck with CM Punk or turn their back on CM Punk? The, the fact that he fucked up Jack Perry is the reason why the fans like CM Punk, so why would you... We want to see the footage. <laughs> like, what? I don't know. There is a social awareness gene that is missing from a lot of people where they cannot read the room. Mm. Tony Khan is one of them. And he's he's here for the pop culture rumble. <laughs> so I ended on this. Um, I'm bringing to the ring old school rap fans. As you guys might not have known or do know, uh, there's an Avengers Civil War, Infinity War going on between Drake and the entire industry. You know, uh, Drake is going up against the Kendricks of the world, the Rick Rosses of the world, uh, the Weekend, Metro Boomin, Future. <laughs> uh, one could argue it's over women. But what I am calling to the ring are those who feel like we are still stuck in the P cutter stages. Some of you might not know who P cutter is. Some of you might not know what lime wire is, but those who are still stuck in that era, I'm calling y'all to the ring because you guys seem to have an, uh, a beef with DJ academics, breaking new music, diss records. You know what I mean? I have a problem with that. Adapt or perish. Adapt or perish. That is a key line from Evolution. So in honor of Evolution dropping that line, I'm bringing everybody to the ring to catch a Batista bomb, a pedigree, an RKO, and to add some little sizzle on it, we're going to end it off with a figure four leg lock just so you understand what Evolution means. Move with the times or move out the way. I'll end it there. He said P cutter. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Shit. Shout out to P cutter. If it was an RB moment, I thought uh, he was going to say Black and Beach vibes. I thought <laughs> I was going to be the next. <laughs> yeah, oh, that. But yeah. uh, once again, that's going to wrap us up here in the third announcers table. Got, you already know. Put your shout outs out there. Let everybody know where they can get you at, where they can connect with. Find me on IG. That's M A R C underscore B A Z E. Can't forget the hyphen. Can't forget the hyphen. Yes. And times. also, May 7th, pull up pianos. 
I'm performing. I believe this is my first actual performance of the year. We dropped two tapes in less than a year. Pull up, see that new material perform. I can't wait to see you there. You got to perform Angel's Calling. I'm calling that now. Pull up. Shouts out. <laughs> I'll be there. Shouts out to me. You know, I've had a tremo- I've had a tremendous week. Um, a lot of hate from my page. I embrace the hate. You know what I mean? Um, shouts out to People Power. Not really, but, you know. Whoa. <laughs> it's, yeah. Kind of crazy, but. Wrestling Ream. R-A-L-L-I-N. Oh, fuck, I forgot how to spell wrestling. <laughs> R-A-S-S-L-I-N. R-E-E-M. As in matchmaker. Momentum builder. Money maker. You know? Um, I embrace all conversations. I've had a lot of, oh, you did you see Roman lose? I'm not shying away from that. As you can see on today's episode, I sang Cody Rhodes' interest music to a depth that I had to owe. Please, please, please give me a follow. Let me know what you really think. And I'll see you on the next one. Great week for us. <laughs> Great week for wrestling. <laughs> It felt amazing being a wrestling fan. I felt at I felt at peace with my wrestling brethren. Shout out to the wrestling community, not the internet wrestling community, the wrestling community, the wrestling community. I'm appreciative of all of you. My grandmother, <laughs> my uncle, my cousin, Ray, wrestling ring, my girl. Everybody, this was an amazing week. Amazing. 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 Good boy. Ruff.